So today I just thought we'd take a look at this rigid hyperlithium ion. It's an older uh, battery pack that I have. It's a, It's been a good battery pack. It's held up well. After it tries to charge just for a second, it goes to defective. So I just thought we'd um, take a look inside and see if there's anything we can do with it. So it's just four T10 security screws on each side. And now with all eight removed, Rigid definitely gets a good design award for their, uh, for the Rigid battery pack, um, the actual housing at least. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of some of the TTI des designs and they design Rigid as well. But I got to admit the battery pack, I have always been impressed at how they did this. I worked on several of these in the past, but not not as much as Roby and uh, Milwaukee and DeWalt and of course our Ego Packs. The way they did their main carriage is part of the main part of the battery pack itself, so that's pretty cool. And also these lower capacity packs are super easy to pop the cells in and out of and either, you know, um, spot weld or, or carefully solder back, however you choose to do so. But re really, really easy to uh, repair the cells on these. Of course, like any higher density or higher capacity pack, it just, it complicates things, but it's still, it's still fairly easy on those as well. So this pack is a little bit unusual that we do show over 17 volts on the output terminals. Of course, our positive is coming straight up to here. And this is our negative. And we're showing 19.8. All of our cells are, are very well balanced, really. It's very surprising that we don't have any uh, cell issues, at least obvious issues. Very, very well balanced. But we do know that these MOSFETs, they're IR MOSFETs. They are F404Z. I know it's typical. Um, maybe it's the higher capa capacity packs or maybe different versions, but... I do have some IRF2804s as well. And uh, this is actually a known good MOSFET. And by the way, just as a side note, I thought I had trouble with that MOSFET. Here's a real similar in-channel MOSFET. So I'll try to have a data sheet up for this MOSFET, but um, they're really, really easy to check. So if we bring our meter over. I'm gonna go to our diode check. So I know the way that this one was in there, that our tab is going to be our drain and our source is going to be this pin here because that's our diode uh, going across. So we don't show any forward voltage on that diode. So this is reverse bias in that diode. So there's nothing there, right? So we check this diode again. There's our diode. Now, if we take our positive lead, which has a little bit of voltage on it, and we go to the gate tab or our pin one, now you'll see that the um, source and the drain should be a closed connection. And it doesn't matter which way we go, right? So, and then the, to quench that or cut that off, we just take our finger or anything across between the gate and the source. We're gonna go back to normal. So there we go, there's a quick and easy way to check our in-channel FET while out, while out of circuit. It's just that easy. But um, these are, to me, are kind of hard to check in circuit. And of course, with a battery, there's no way to, to easily remove the power. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this pack, since it's acting kind of different, is I'm gonna find my reset and my ground. So we have reset plus five ground data and clock. And if I go to my reset and my ground, and I'm just gonna touch my um, I'm just gonna touch my leads together, and that's actually gonna do a reset 
on the board and sometimes you get lucky and the board needs a reset because if you think about it your microcontroller don't don't have an easy way to, to reset if something goes kind of squirrely with it there's no good way to do a reboot or a reset without doing it here because there's no way to easily cycle the power from the board and put it back so maybe 10 percent of the time that'll help us out with the pack it's that new screwy i have had to help some with with some 40 volt robies i don't really fool with them much anymore but they're just too problematic, of course. I did a video talking about that, but, but on this one, I do see some corrosion here. I'm gonna go out to the garage and spray some contact cleaner on there because this is under power. I'm gonna use contact cleaner this time and clean it up, but I don't believe that's causing an issue because the only trace that that's going across is a test point there, if you can see that. And I believe that one's the one that goes all the way down. Yeah, you can see that. We even go to the continuity check there. So it goes all the way down to R13. So we went all the way to R13 there and got our continuity. So I don't think that's causing the issue, but I still don't like it. I want to clean it up. I'm going to be right back. Back now with that corrosion cleaned up, it was something on the surface there. It, it wasn't a trace or anything. Looks really clean now. But still shows defective, so no dice. So back now after some testing, we realize the reason we're only getting our 17 volts on our terminals output terminals is, is this MOSFET here. Now this MOSFET here connecting through and we are getting it through this one, but it's not getting back through this on my right here. This MOSFET here is not getting through. We can see that from, um, from a positive terminal, of course we get our 19 there. We actually get it going through the board to here to the MOSFET. It should be going through and that's where it's dropping down. So what we get in here is also the same 17.9 and as well as here. This is gonna be our gate. We are getting a small gate signal on this MOSFET. We're not getting any kind of gate signal on this one. So By chance, if we if we just jump this gate to this gate, if you look at there, that MOSFET actually fires. So the MOSFET is actually okay. It's the gate signal coming from the control board. So if that's the case, just a quick test to verify, see how the um, the output does nothing because the MOSFET is not allowing anything to happen. This is just for testing only, of course, but this is taking the negative off the 20 volts coming in here. And we're just going to go around to the drain on the MOSFET. Look at there. Still something going on with the control board, of course. That's just using actually one side of the MOSFET to work off the control board apparently. And now we're actually bridging across this one. So I haven't had the chance to dig much deeper into these. I'll look at this one a little bit more, but yeah, this is actually back into the control board, back to the microprocessor somewhere. Without schematics, it does make it difficult. It's almost like this battery, it either does not know that it's got the voltage that it has the way it likes to blink the one light, or either it's something with the wake up part of the circuit. So I'm actually going to go clean it up a little bit better. I don't really like to clean up something under power, but I will use some uh, non-conductive parts cleaner and probably even some isopropyl alcohol, some high percentage and just, and I'm just going to take a, um, a small brush, just a non-static uh, brush would be better to brush across here and especially this area here around the microcontroller I'll just see if we have any luck with it because I've cleaned off the corrosion in this spot here But I just cleaned it off locally. Um, I didn't I didn't go crazy with cleaning it So we'll clean it up and I'll be right back and test it out 
Well, back now I have to clean the board up really, really well and drown it. I just use my blower, um, my ego blower across it to, to dry it off some. So, especially with the cleaner, it evaporates pretty quick. Even though it looked like a brand new one as I was cleaning it, it shined really well. It did a haze back over. It's getting a film back on it again there. So with some type of a uh, conformal coating they sprayed on this thing. But what was interesting, I'm sorry I didn't have the video with me. It was getting closer to dark outside and I actually went outside to spray it. So as I sprayed this part here with my cleaner, it seemed like when I got in this area right here, these lights started lighting up. And now I don't know, um, it, you know, if it's a good sign. After I got it dry, that they went out on their own because they lit up on their own. So I don't know if you ever had experience doing one of these or not, but this is the exact same pack I was working on that was showing the one light um, and like not waking up. I actually cleaned both sides, but before I clean what I'm calling the bottom here on the power side, up here around my... Um, my five volt rail and my microcontroller here. I was cleaning all around this area here and the lights come up and went up. I think it was three and the fourth one was blinking like it thought it was in charge mode, honestly, so. But we actually have for the first time our 19 volts out and I'm actually getting almost 13 volts on the gate of that MOSFET. Let's see a bit of charge right quick. Well, would you look at that? Just clean the board. Well, I mean, I'm happy about that, but you know what's disturbing about that is such a nice pack can be impeded or completely dysfunctional by corrosion on the circuit board. And it was so little corrosion that I cleaned up the spot that I seen corrosion, but I didn't even worry about. Um, this part here did not even look bad. I, th I think I showed a, a, a up close video of it. I, maybe you could tell something on there. I'll look back and see as well, but I didn't see nothing obvious to make me even think it needed cleaning, but I really did it as a last ditch effort because I was tracing back on transistors and couldn't figure out why what one wasn't turning on that was cutting on that output because I really can't remember if I did it on camera or not. But one thing I was checking and I was trying to show is this transistor here. That's actually Q4, but it's really, really hard to, to read that. That Q4 runs down and it hits this network of resistors here and through that network the output of q3 it actually comes down and it hits the the gate on this mosfet and no matter what i done i could not get any voltage we're looking for a positive voltage here see see how that's a negative 0.1 but as soon as you touch these terminals it should wake up and look at that that is perfect it should be like 12 or 13 volts. Just as it is on this MOSFET. This MOSFET had no issues. This MOSFET, I never could get to wake up until cleaning this area right here. There's actually not much on the back side of this board, but like a ground plane. So I don't think the cleaner and then the alcohol helped by getting underneath. I, I believe it was just something here that had corrosion on it that I really uh, didn't couldn't tell. But once again, it's starting to haze over. It doesn't look the cleanest now, honestly. But um, that's some kind of conformal coating that every time we clean it, we're getting some of it off, so it's hazing back over. I want to give it a good cleaning again, but right now, it's actually working, and um, unbelievable. I know I'm going to try to make the video rather short, but I actually spent a couple hours on this thing. It's unreal. I really thought it was going to be something to do with um, the thermistors or resistor on the board, or that corrosion that we found earlier. So uh, I'm gonna let this sit here and continue to dry, and we'll just come back and test it again. And I may even put it in a drill, just make sure it works. Back now, it's had quite a bit of time to dry and still showing perfectly. Let's go ahead and see if it'll charge a little bit more to be fully charged, and if that works, We'll throw it in this little impact driver and see uh, see how it does. And back now we are fully charged, which is awesome. No faults. Just do a quick test here. Awesome. 
And man, just how cool this case is, man. I still think they work for Lego who designed this case. That is sweet. I like it. Just gotta put the eight screws back in and we're ready to go. Not a typical fix. I mean, we didn't really have to repair or replace any component. Just very odd how a simple cleanup got it back working. I was kind of pulling my hair out there for a little while trying to figure out the circuitry and just the sensing part of it. But you know, nevertheless, they got it working again. So, so if you like this video today, looking inside of this rigid hyperlithium on battery and that weird little fix, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.